So at the beginning, uh, I told you about the Pali alphabet and Pali pronunciation. Now I want you to read the Pali on the screen. You get familiar with the Pali. Upika Sahagata Chakku Vinyana Upika Sahagata Sota Vinyana Upika Sahagata Ghana Vinyana Upika Sahagata Jifwa Vinyana Dukha Sahagata Kaya Vinyana Upika Sahagata Sampatichana Upika Sahagata Santirana I want you to guess the meaning of these words. Upika Sahagada with indifference uh, or with uh, neutral feeling. Chakku Vinyana eye consciousness. Sota Vinyana ear consciousness. Kana Vinyana nose consciousness. Jihua Vinyana tongue consciousness. Dukkha Sahagada No, no, Dukkha Sahagada <laughs> with pain. <laughs> Kaya Vinyana Varigana Upika Sahagada Sampatichana Receiving huh? Receiving Accepting Sampatichana and Upika Sahagada Santirana Investigating Okay. So little by little you you'll become acquainted with these Pali words. And then the next again Upika Sahagada Chaku Vinyana Upika Sahagada Sota Vinyana Upika Sahagada Ghana Vinyana Upika Sahagata Jihua Vinyana Sukha Sahagata Kaya Vinyana Upika Sahagata Sampatichana Somanasa Sahagata Santirana Upika Sahagada Santirana Okay, again Chakku Vinyana Eye Consciousness Sota Vinyana Ghana Vinyana Jihua Vinyana Kaya Vinyana Sampatichana Receiving consciousness, Santirana, investigating, Santirana again, investigating. Okay. Now the last three, Upika Sahagada, Pancha Dwara Vajana, Upika Sahagada, Mano Dwara Vajana, Somanasa Sahagada Hasitupada Okay. Now Pancha Dwara Vajana. Pancha means five. Dwara means door. And Avajana means turning. So turning to the object in five sense doors. Now the eye, ear and so on are called doors. Because it is through these that consciousness enter our mind. So they are called doors. Altogether there are six doors. 
the five senses and, and the mind. And mano dwara vajana. Mano means mind, dwara means uh, door, and avajana means turning. So turning in the uh, mind door. The last one, hasita upada. Hasita means smiling. Upada means producing or cause to be. So hasita upada means smile, producing. And when we see something, what consciousness arises? Eye consciousness. And when we see something ugly, Akusala resultant. Huh? When we see something we like or uh, beautiful, kusala vipaka. Very good. Say so when we when we hit ourselves against something and we have pain, yeah, body consciousness, right? Uh, the akusala vipaka, body consciousness. When we have good touch. Again, body consciousness, a resultant of kusala. Very good. And when Buddha smiles, <laughs> it was not us. <laughs> then why are these called ahituka or rootless? Because they have no concomitant roots. Because they arise without roots. And what are the roots? Three unwholesome roots and three beautiful roots. What are the unwholesome roots? Greed, hatred and delusion. And the, the beautiful roots? Non-delusion. Very good. So the, these six are called roots. So next we will go to Kama vachara sobhana chita. Sense fear, beautiful consciousness. These types of consciousness are called beautiful consciousness because they are accompanied by beautiful mental factors. Now, in the second chapter of the manual, you will study the 52 mental factors. And these 52 mental factors are divided into the say, common or neutral mental factors, unwholesome mental factors, and beautiful mental factors. Those types of consciousness uh, that are accompanied by beautiful mental factors are called beautiful consciousness. And here in this section, these types of consciousness uh, mainly arise in the sense sphere. Sense sphere means the 11 planes of existence. So they mainly or frequently arise in these realms and so they are called sense sphere beautiful consciousness. And they are again divided into three. Wholesome, resultant, and functional. So, sense fear, wholesome consciousness, sense fear, resultant consciousness with roots, and sense fear, functional consciousness with roots. Now, if, if you are familiar with the eight types of consciousness, accompanied by attachment or rooted in attachment, you can easily understand these eight sense fear wholesome consciousness. There is only one difference. Now, if you read the consciousness as you will see, with pleasure, with knowledge, unprompted. So the only difference is with knowledge. Instead of with wrong view, you put with knowledge. So, with pleasure, with knowledge, and unprompted. This is the first type of consciousness. So, the examples are given in the manual. 
someone joyfully performs a generous deed, understanding that this is a wholesome deed, spontaneously without prompting. So that means, say, you go to a temple and happily you make a donation spontaneously without being prompted by any person. So in that case, the first type of consciousness in this group arises in your mind. Someone performs the same good deed with understanding after deliberation or prompting by another. Sometimes other, another person may say to you, why not donate, make donations to the temple? And then you make the donation. Or sometimes you may encourage yourself. So in that case, the consciousness is prompted. That is, with knowledge, with understanding. Someone joyfully performs a generous deed without prompting but without understanding that it is a wholesome deed. Now, without understanding sometimes means without uh, understanding uh, the law of karma. So in that case, the third type of consciousness arises. And then the fourth type of consciousness is when someone joyfully performs a generous deed without understanding after deliberation or prompting by another. So in that case, the fourth type of consciousness arises. And number five to number eight types of consciousness should be understood in the same way as the preceding four, but with neutral feeling instead of joyful feeling. Sometimes you, you do a meritorious deed with neutral feeling. You are not happy, but you, you do the meritorious deed. So in that case, you are, uh, the type of consciousness is accompanied by indifference or neutral feeling. So, like the eight uh, types of consciousness rooted in attachment, here we have eight types of consciousness accompanied by knowledge and not accompanied by knowledge. So, sometimes we do some meritorious deed with understanding, with understanding the law of karma, with understanding that this is the good karma and this good karma will give us pleasant results in the future. With that understanding, we do meritorious deed. So sometimes we, we do meritorious deed without understanding. That can happen when we do it lightly, when we do not pay attention to the deed. Now this teaches us that when we do some meritorious deed, we must see to it that knowledge is present in us. You do some good deed, you do some charity, or you keep precepts, or you help other people and so on, but whatever you do, you try to, to know or you try to understand the law of karma when you do the meritorious deed. So that is important for us. Sometimes we, we do a meritorious deed without thinking of it. Say, you may just pick up a flower and offer to the Buddha uh, without understanding. So in that case, it will be the merit without knowledge. So when we understand uh, these types of consciousness, then we can do meritorious deed which will give us best results. So these are the wholesome consciousness, kusala consciousness. And since these types of consciousness are wholesome, they are bound to give good results. And the good results are in the form of the another type of consciousness that are called resultant consciousness. So, the resultant consciousness of the eight wholesome consciousness 
are the same or identical. So we can, uh, with regard to result and consciousness, we also say with pleasure, with knowledge, unprompted, with pleasure, with knowledge, prompted, and so on. Now, these eight types of consciousness arise as a result of the, the eight uh, wholesome consciousness shown above. It is said that the sense fear wholesome karma can produce identical as well as non-identical results. So these eight, the, the second group, result and consciousness, these eight are identical results. Can you tell me which are the non-identical results? Where do you find the non-identical results? You go back to Ahituka, rootless consciousness. So the second group of rootless consciousness is a result of wholesome karma, right? So you see something good, and that is the result of kusala, right? You, you hear something good, you smell something good, and so on, and that consciousness is the result of the wholesome sense fear wholesome consciousness. So the sense fear wholesome consciousness give identical results as well as non-identical results. Identical results are given here as eight sense fear resultant consciousness with roots. And the non-identical, identical result consciousness can be found among the eight rootless resultant consciousness. And the third group, sense fear, functional consciousness with roots. Now these eight types of consciousness are called functional. Again, functional means just they arise and they disappear without leaving any potential to give results or without any karmic activity. And these eight types of consciousness are identical with the first eight, uh, the sense fear wholesome consciousness. But when they arise in the minds of Buddhas and Arahants, they are called functional consciousness. Now, when we do some act of charity, uh, when we make some donation, uh, we get kusala, we get merit. But when an arahant makes the same kind of charity, what does he get? Does he get good karma? No. <laughs> so this is just doing, just doing the act. Uh, his act is not called karma because he has eradicated the roots of karma uh, that are ignorance and craving. Since he has no, no ignorance and no craving, whatever he does is just the doing without any potential to give results. So when an arahant does an act of charity, then one of the functional consciousness here, the sense fear functional consciousness will arise in his mind. It is the same type of consciousness as the wholesome consciousness, but the difference is that it doesn't give any results because the volition in these types of consciousness does not constitute a karma. So when we add these eight wholesome, eight resultant and eight functional consciousness, we get altogether 24 types of consciousness. And these 24 types of consciousness are called sense, fear, beautiful consciousness. 
when we do enumerations of the data, sometimes we have to use short collective names for a group of uh, consciousness. So, since these are called sense sphere beautiful consciousness, the others that we have just studied are called non-beautiful consciousness. Twelve unwholesome consciousness and eighteen rootless consciousness are called non-beautiful. Called means uh, they are called in Myanmar in our country, but they are not called non-beautiful in the books. But uh, when we study these uh, types of consciousness, we need to be very familiar uh, with the with the particulars of these types of consciousness. So when we try to be familiar with these types of consciousness, sometimes we have to use short names for a group of uh, types of consciousness. So if you want to refer to the 30 types of consciousness that are 12 unwholesome and 18 uh, rootless consciousness, we will say non-beautiful consciousness. It is important that uh, we remember we always are able to see these types of consciousness clearly in our minds. Now, in order to memorize them, that card is very useful. So please take out that, that small card and let us see, uh, identify the consciousness, uh, types of consciousness represented by each. Now, altogether we have finished 54 types of consciousness. Now, the first 12 are Akusala. And then uh, the three columns consist of 18 rootless consciousness. And then the, the next three columns consist of sense, fear, beautiful consciousness. So we get altogether 54 types of consciousness. And these 54 types of consciousness are called sense fear consciousness. So among the sense fear consciousness, 30 are non-beautiful and 24 are beautiful. Now, I want you to point out some types of consciousness. Okay. Seeing an ugly object. Right. Or seeing a beautiful object. Right. Hearing an ugly sound. Hearing a beautiful sound. And when we are angry, one of these two. When we doubt about the efficacy of the Dharma, yeah. When our mind cannot take the object clearly, when it is just moving above the object, the last one, uh, called restlessness, then we are attached to something and we have no wrong view. Four of them, right? So you can exercise like that. They're looking at this and then imagine different situations and what type of consciousness arises in your mind. And with the help of this card, you will get more and more familiar uh, with these types of consciousness. So altogether, there are 54 types of consciousness. And among them, how many are unwholesome? 12. How many are wholesome? Eight. How many are resultant? How many? Eight, seven, eight. 
23. So, uh, 23 are result and how many are functional? 3 plus 8, 11. Now, the wholesome and unwholesome, can they produce results or not? Yes. So, they can produce results. Then the result and consciousness, can they produce results? No, because they are themselves results. They have no ability or no power to produce results. And then functional consciousness, can they produce results? No. Are they result of anything? No. So they are called indeterminate. That means not declared as uh, kusala or akusala. So the resultant consciousness are also called uh, indeterminate. That means not declared as kusala or akusala. Now let us see how many are accompanied by pleasure. So 30 are accompanied by pleasurable feeling. And how many are accompanied by neutral feeling? You, you can pick up the blue dots, right? <laughs> Maybe 32. So in, in this way also you can make yourself familiar with, uh, with these types of consciousness. So when we study a bit of in the beginning, uh, when we were novices, we are expected to be very familiar with this and we are expected to be able to give the answers right away. And so we have to exercise again and again so that when we are asked, we are able to give answers. Now, you are not taking any examinations and so it, it, it's all right if you cannot give the answer uh, without looking at the books. So what I want you to, to be able to do is to find the answer you want in the book or in your notes. So if you can give the answer looking at the book, it's okay. Now we finish the types of consciousness that are called sense fear consciousness. They are called sense fear consciousness. Why? Because they arise mainly in the uh, realms called sense fear. And how many realms are there? How many planes of existence are there? Eleven. So they arise uh, in the minds of human beings. They arise in the minds of animals and, and health hell beings and they arise in the minds of celestial beings. But they arise in the minds of Brahmas also. But since they arise mainly and frequently in the minds of the beings in the sense sphere, they are called sense sphere consciousness. So we must understand this. Because they, they are called sense sphere consciousness, we must not uh, say that they arise only in sense sphere and not in material sphere and immaterial sphere because they arise in those spheres too but their main area of arising is the 11 sense sphere uh, planes. So they are called sense sphere consciousness and the types of these sense sphere consciousness are altogether 54. So the next group of consciousness is called Rupa Vachara consciousness or form sphere consciousness or we may call it material sphere consciousness. And these form sphere or material sphere consciousnesses are 15 in number and they are divided into again wholesome resultant and 
functional. Now, the first sentence you see, first jhana, and the second, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana, and fifth jhana. Now, these types of consciousness are, uh, we may call them higher states of consciousness. Now, they arise in those who practice meditation and who attains what are called jhanas. Now, a person may practice a kind of samatha meditation. Now, there are different types of samatha meditation, and let us say a person is practicing the disk meditation. Now, disk meditation means you make a disk with clay, and then you put the disk in front of you, and then look at it and keep your mind on the disk, saying uh, it is an up disk, so earth, 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 thousands of time, actually memorizing that earth disk. And a time will come when you have memorized that image, and so you can see that image without looking at it. With your eyes closed, even you can see that image. Then when you can see that image, you go on practicing meditation on that mental image, and that mental image will become more and more refined. Now, the f first, the mental image will appear to you the same as the real image. That means if there are some blemishes in the disk, then they will appear in the mental image. When you practice meditation on it again and again, then that mental image will become refined and clean and all the blemishes will disappear. It will appear to you as a polished mirror. And then you practice meditation on it and then a type of consciousness arises as the result of that practice. And that type of consciousness uh, you have not experienced before. And that type of consciousness is called jhana consciousness. And this jhana consciousness is accompanied by mental factors. And the important mental factors are, they are given vitaka, vichara, piti, sukha, ikagata. Now you will have to memorize these Pali words because English translations are long. So, vitaka, vichara, piti, sukha, ikagata. These five are called factors of jhana or constituents of jhana or members of jhana. So the first jhana consciousness arises accompanied by these five jhana factors. After getting the first jhana, a person wants to attain the second jhana. So in order to attain the second jhana, he practices meditation again. This time, finding fault with the first one, vitaka. It is like, say, after you graduate from high school, you want to get a, a degree. So after you get a degree, BA degree, you want to get MA degree. And after you get the MA degree, you want to get a PhD degree. So in the same way, a person who has uh, reached the first jhana wants to get the second jhana. So in order to get the second jhana, he has to see fault in vittaka. Now, vitaka means thinking. So this thinking is a little uh, distracting. So it can distract uh, the mind. So he finds fault with vitaka and practice meditation. So when he gets the second jhana, vitaka is missing in his jhana. 
simply because he doesn't want Vitaka. So in this way, he eliminates one after another of these mental factors or jhana factors. So when he gets the second jhana, there are only four jhana factors with it. When he gets the third jhana, there are only three jhana factors with it. When he gets the full jhana, there are only two jhana factors with the jhana consciousness. And when he gets the fifth jhana, there are only two jhana factors. So the first jhana factor is accompanied by vitaka, vichara, piti, sukha, ekagata. Second is vichara, piti, sukha, ekagata. Third, piti, sukha, ekagata. Fourth, sukha, ekagata. And fifth, with upikha and ekagata. So these five types of consciousness are called jhana consciousness. Now, The Pali word jhana, you see the notes. The Pali word jhana is derived from the Pali root j, j h e, meaning to contemplate and to burn up. Thus the jhanas are so called because they closely contemplate the object and because they burn up the adverse states opposed to concentration. The adverse states are the five hindrances or nivaranas of sensual desire, ill will, sloth and torpor, restlessness and worry and doubt. So jhana, the word jhana has two meanings. One is to closely contemplate the object. And the second meaning is burning up the mental hindrances. When one gets jhana, the mental hindrances are subdued. So the subduing is called burning up. So the word jhana has these two meanings. Closely observing the object and also burning up the mental hindrances. Now, the five factors of jhana, vitaka, vichara, piti, sukha, and ekagata. Now, vitaka is translated into English as initial application of mind. Initial application of mind to the object. And vichara is translated as sustained application of mind to the object. PT is translated as zest. Sometimes it is translated as joy. Sometimes or some others translate it as happiness. And also it is translated as rapture. So, which translation do we stick to? we would rather stick to the word P.E.T. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, otherwise, we cannot be accurate or say people will misunderstand us. Suppose I say joy, and meaning P.E.T. But you may understand joy to be Sukha or Somanasa. And so, in this case, we have to keep the word, Pali word as it is and use it, PT. So PT is a kind of joy or a, it is a kind of pleasurable interest in objects. And then Sukha. Sukha is translated as happiness. Now PT and Sukha are different. Sukha is one kind of feeling. Vedana. Piti is not Vedana. So these two are different. And then the last one is Ekagada. One pointedness of mind. Mind having only one object. So Ekagada is actually 
another name for samadhi or concentration. Now, only when you have strong concentration do you get jhana. So, in the jhana factors, ekagata is very important. Now, vitaka. These are all mental state, mental factors, and so we will find them in the second chapter of the manual. The function of vitaka is to put the mind on the object. Without vitaka, mind cannot climb onto the object, it is said. So, vitaka is a mental factor that takes the mind and put the mind on the object. The function of vichara is to keep the mind on the object. Now, uh, vitaka put the mind on the object and vichara keep the mind on the object. And bd is just pleasurable interest or zest or joy. And sukha is happiness and ekagata firmly fixed on the object. So when these five jhana factors are strong and they are doing their own function, probably then a person is said to get the first jhana. And after the first jhana, he may want to get the second jhana and so he practices meditation and he gets second jhana and so on. So, First jhana has five factors and second jhana has four, the third jhana has three, fourth jhana has two and five, fifth jhana has also two. Now you see the fourth and fifth, the, the difference between fourth and fifth jhana. Fourth jhana is accompanied by sukha and ikagata, happiness and one-pointedness of mind. And the fifth jhana is accompanied by ubhikha and ikagata. So when he gets these types of consciousness are called wholesome consciousness, wholesome jhana consciousness. If a person dies with these uh, uh, jhanas intact, then he will be reborn in the world of brahmas. He will not be reborn in the world of human beings or he will not be reborn in the world of lower celestial beings called devas. So he will be reborn in the world of brahmas. When he is reborn in the world of brahmas, his first type of consciousness in that life will be the resultant of these five jhanas. Suppose a person gets first jhana in this life and he dies with that first jhana intact. Then he will be reborn as a Brahma in the world of Brahmas and the first consciousness that arises there will be the resultant first jhana form sphere resultant consciousness. So in the same way, if a person gets the second, third, fourth and fifth jhana and he dies with uh, the jhana intact, then he will be reborn as a Brahma and the first type of consciousness that arises in that life will be the resultant of these jhanas. So, these five jhana consciousness produce five identical results. And these five vipaka or Resultant consciousness can be experienced only in the world of Brahma. Now, the first five can be experienced in human world and in the world of devas. But the five vipaka consciousness can be experienced only in the Brahma world. And the third group, Kiriya Chaita, Rupa Vajra Kiriya Chaita of form sphere functional consciousness can be experienced in the world of human beings, in the world of devas, and in the world of brahmas. They are experienced by 
Buddhas and Arahants. Whenever you see the word Kriya, you remember Buddhas and Arahants. Mostly. So when a person becomes an Arahant, and then he practices uh, Samatha meditation and he gets Jhana. So when he gets Jhana, then his Jhana consciousness is said to be functional. Because even though that is the Jhana consciousness, it has no potential to give results, simply because he has eradicated the roots of existence, which are ignorance and craving. So an Arahant has no more rebirth in the future. And so whatever he does constitutes just doing and bear no results. So the form sphere consciousness consists of five wholesome, five resultant, and five functional. And they are not difficult to remember because just first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana, and fifth jhana. Now please, you have to sheet with the title Factors in Jhana. Now you will see the heads fourfold method, uh, fivefold method, fourfold, fourfold method and factors. Now, in the Sutta discourses, four jhanas are always mentioned, not five. It is very rare that we find five jhanas mentioned in the discourses or in the suttas. Even then, not expressly with the name five jhanas, but we infer from the words used by the Buddha as to mean five jhanas. So, almost always in the sutta pitaka, we find mention of only four jhanas. But in Abhidhamma, jhanas are mentioned as four and also as five. So we have this five-fold method of jhanas and four-fold method of jhanas. Now in the sodas, we find four-fold method of jhanas and in Abhidhamma, we find both fivefold and fourfold. Now, why are there four jhanas and five jhanas? It may be confusing. Why not uh, there be only four jhanas or five jhanas only? Now, it depends on the ability of the yogi. Now, some yogis, some meditators have so high standard of intelligence or high standard of understanding that they are able to get rid of the two jhana factors at one time. Now there are five jhana factors, vitaka, vichara, piti, sukha and ekagata. There are meditators who can get rid of vitaka and vichara at just one time. So for them, there are only four jhanas, not five. But for those who can get rid of the jhana factors just one by one, there are five jhanas. So that is why jhanas are uh, described as four or five. So when jhanas are described as four, we call it fourfold method. And when they are described as five, we call it fivefold method. 
the first jhana in fivefold method is the first jhana in fourfold method. There is no no difference here. But the second jhana in fivefold method has no corresponding jhana in fourfold method. The third jhana in fivefold method corresponds to second jhana in fourfold method. And the fourth jhana in fivefold method corresponds to third jhana in fourfold method. And fifth jhana in fivefold method corresponds to fourth jhana in fourfold method. So first jhana in fivefold method has five factors. Vitaka, Vichara, Pidi, Sukha, and Ekagata. Second jhana and first jhana in fourfold method has the same number of factors. But the second jhana of fivefold method has four jhana factors. And the third jhana of fivefold method and the second jhana of fourfold method has the same number of um, jhana factors. They are Piti, Sukha, and Ekagata. And fourth jhana of fivefold method and third jhana of fourfold method has, uh, have two Jhana factors, Sukha and Ekagata. And the fifth jhana of fivefold method and fourth jhana of fourfold method has Upekha and Ekagata. So, if we understand the fivefold method, we can easily understand the fourfold method. We skip the second jhana in fourfold method, uh, fivefold method and go to third jhana as second jhana and fourfold method and so on. So, we should be familiar with both the fivefold method and fourfold method. And these jhanas are also called attainments or samapati. Now we'll come to that later when we study the formless Jhanas also. Now these jhana factors have their opposites and we should understand these opposites too. It is said that Vitaka is the opposite of Tina and Midha, that is sloth and Toba. Now sloth and Toba are uh, hindrance are called hindrances. There are five hindrances. So sloth and topo is one hindrance. So vitaka is the opposite of sloth and topo. Sloth and topo simply means sleepiness. So when you when you have so much thought, you cannot go to sleep. Sometimes you cannot go to sleep because you are thinking too much. So that means vitaka is at work, and so it drives away sloth and toba or sleepiness. And vichara is the opposite of doubt, vichikecha or doubt. Now vichara is keeping the mind on the object for some more time and so when mind is on the object for some long time then it is able to discard doubt about the object. So vichara is said to be the opposite of vichikecha or doubt. And PT is the opposite of ill will. PT is opposite of anger. And sukha, uh, happiness, is the opposite of restlessness and remorse. So when a person is in happiness, then there is no restlessness of mind and there is no remorse. Now, remorse means regret about some bad thing done in the past and regret about some good thing that one did not do in the past. And then Ubikha is also the opposite of restlessness and remorse. The last one, Ekagata, is the opposite of 
kama chanda or sensual desire. So, when we know the opposite of these jhana factors, we can do something uh, if we want to uh, get rid of or if we want to to diminish these mental hindrances. Suppose we want to develop samadhi or ekagata. Now, the opposite of samadhi is sensual desire. So if you want to develop samadhi, then you should avoid sensual desires. If you indulge in sensual desires and at the same time you want to get samadhi, you may you will not get samadhi simply because you have not got rid of the opposites. So understanding of these can help us to get rid of or to diminish these mental hindrances. The factors of jhana are able to inhibit these mental hindrances. And so long as these mental hindrances are subdued, there is jhana. Now, when the they arise again, then jhana will disappear. So it is important that we understand the opposites of the jhana factors. And here they are given as vidaka is opposite of sloth and top and so on. Because these uh, five jhana factors are the opposites of Sloth and Tobo and so on, they alone are called jhanas. Although there are some other mental factors that arise with jhana consciousness. Or oh, no, it's not on the sheet. We must understand three things. Jhana. Jhana factor. Jhana consciousness. Jhana, jhana factors. Jhana consciousness. The name jhana is the collective name for the five factors. Vitaka, Vichara, Piti, Sukha and Ekagata. These are collectively called jhana. So when we say jhana, we mean these five, these five or four or three um, mental factors or jhana factors. And when we say jhana factor, we mean these individual factors. It may be just vitaka, it may be just vichara and so on. And jhana consciousness means consciousness uh, that is accompanied by these jhana factors. So we need to understand these three things clearly. Jhana, jhana factors and jhana consciousness. If we want to be precise, then we should follow this division or difference. But sometimes, when talking not seriously, we may use the word jhana, meaning jhana consciousness. But it is good to understand the terms used in Abhidhamma as they are taught in Abhidhamma. And so, we must understand precisely what each term represents. So here, these three terms, jhana, jhana factors, and jhana consciousness, these three are different. When we say jhana, we mean the, the these five or four or three factors together. So they are called jhana. And jhana factor means these individual members of the jhana. And jhana consciousness means consciousness uh, associated with or accompanied by these uh, five or uh, five or three two factors. These fifteen types of consciousness are called form sphere consciousness. So five wholesome, five resultant, and five functional. And these types of consciousness arise in human beings arise in celestial beings also and they arise frequently in the home sphere realms. 
So, so there are 15 forms fear consciousness. They are called jhana consciousness because they contemplate the objects closely and also they burn up the mental hindrances. Okay, tomorrow we will continue our study of the con- types of consciousness. So formless. Oh, there's some description of jhana text. Okay, tomorrow we will continue. Okay. Um, now we have question time. We have five minutes for questions. Anybody? Venerable sir, uh, just one, one uh, I think I got two questions. The first question is that uh, does a uh, nimitta, a bright sign, have to arise uh, before you actually pra- uh, continue to practice on to attain jangan? Okay, that's the first question. Second question is that how deep the concentration is needed? That means do you require to reach jangan uh, in order to do a vipassana? Or is it a, a normal nimitta we do when we uh, do vipassana? In order to get jhana, you need to get nimitta. So nimitta means a sign. Let us say you practice the kasina or disc meditation. So when you have uh, memorized the disc in your mind and you can see it even with your eyes closed, and that that is one sign, one nimitta. And when that sign becomes a mental image, when that mental image becomes more and more refined and it is like a polished mirror, then it is called a counterpart sign, Patibhaga Nimitta. So in order to get jhana, you need to get the counterpart sign. So the first sign is called, it is translated as learning sign, but I don't like that translation. The, the Pali word is Ugha Nimitta. Now, Ugha means, uh, it, it can mean learning also. But I think here it is not learning sign, but it, the sign which has been grasped, the sign which has been taken up, something like that. So, first there is that Ugha Nimitta, the sign, uh, let us say memorized sign, and then the second one is called Patibhaga Nimitta, or counterpart sign. That is the polished or refined image of the casino disc. So only after getting the counterpart sign can one reach jhana. And then practice of vipassana. Now, a person can practice samatha meditation and catch jhana. So after getting the jhana, he may take that jhana as the object of his vipassana meditation. He may take the factors of jhana as the object of his meditation. He will contemplate on these factors as impermanent, suffering, and on so. So a person can uh, change to vipassana after getting uh, jhanas. And that is one way of the practice of vipassana. First, samadha meditation, and then change to vipassana. And the other method is just practice vipassana meditation without practice of samadha meditation. So there are two ways of the practice of meditation uh, taught in the texts and also in the commentaries. So you can follow any path you like. You may practice uh, samatha meditation first and then change to vipassana meditation or you may practice vipassana meditation in the outset. Uh, Siado, just now you uh, want us to practice about using this uh, small card and you ask us um, there are how many... Uh, uh, chitta or so-called consciousness that uh, associate with joy. But in this card, I can only f- find 18. But just now you mentioned about 30. So w- which are the uh, another 12? <laughs> maybe maybe, maybe I, I... 
because all the red one I counted only have eighteen. Eighteen, okay. Yes. I don't know, maybe I made a mistake. <laughs> you get only eighteen? Yeah. yeah, okay. Good evening, Venerable Sir. Can you elaborate again uh, on uh, receiving consciousness and uh, investigating consciousness? Is this a, a subset of uh, mind consciousness or? There are different types of consciousness. Receiving consciousness is one type of consciousness and investigating consciousness is another type of consciousness. As the name implies, receiving consciousness means receiving the object. The object is, is presented to the senses and then uh, the senses experience the object and after the experience the object is received or accepted by the mind and then after receiving it uh, the mind investigates it, this object whether it is desirable or undesirable and so on so there are two different types of consciousness these two types of consciousness uh, arise through uh, the five sense doors So there are different and distinct types of consciousness with different functions. So receiving is one function and investigating is another function. But in the thought process, it does not stop there. After investigating will come determining. So after determining, there will come the full experience of the object. So when we study the thought process, say we will have to explain this. So you, you, you wait until we come to the, the thought processes. No more questions. Shall we call it a day? Uh, please rise.